Congratulations on your new Honda CRV. Today I'm going to show you a few ways that we can personalize the vehicle and make it your own. Welcome to the interior cabin of your vehicle. First, I'm going to show you a few ways that we can personalize your audio settings and set up some favorite stations by presetting them. First, we're going to head to your audio settings right on the main screen. By selecting the audio tab, you're then going to show all of the music options that you have. In the upper left hand corner, you're going to see a source option. Go ahead and select that. From here, you'll notice that you have an option between FM, AM, XM radio, and also a few additional options such as Bluetooth, USB port, and iPod. By selecting what station you would like, you then are able to go ahead and choose from AM, FM, and XM. On the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see a scan option. This will go ahead and scan all of the stations that are available for you to listen to. Next to that is a tuner option. The tuner option is going to allow you to skip to the next channel directly after the channel that you're on. By scrolling over and selecting via tuner or seek, you'll then be able to go ahead and find the station you want. When you find the desired station that you like, you then can go ahead and hold down options number one through six, or by selecting the little white arrow on the right hand side, number seven through 12 for your presets. When you figure out which station you would like to go ahead and preset as number one through six, go ahead and hold down one of the numbers. Do you hear a little beep? When you hear a little beep, you'll then be able to notice that your station is now preset to whatever number you've chosen to do. By selecting in the center of the screen, right above the little white arrow above the seek symbol on the right hand side, you'll then be able to go ahead and notice a full list of all stations right in a row. This will allow you to go ahead and scan quickly from one station to a next. By selecting the back button on the left hand side underneath your phone icon, you'll then always be able to go ahead and head to the screen that you were just at. Once you preset all of your stations, we're then going to go ahead and hit the home button. And next, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Bluetooth. By heading to your phone icon on your main screen and also heading to your settings in your phone, Select your Bluetooth option in your settings. Make sure that your Bluetooth is on. Your screen is going to ask you if you'd like to add and pair a new phone. Select yes. By selecting hands-free link, you're then going to go ahead and allow the car to sync your favorite contacts. The pairing was successful. Please go ahead and turn on priority device settings. The car is then going to ask you if you would like to go ahead and turn your audio on and your phone on or just one or the other. Once you've selected what you'd like, go ahead and press the OK button. From here, it's then going to ask you if you'd like to turn on your Honda Link Assist. Honda Link Assist is in the event of a crash is detected, the vehicle will attempt to call emergency services using your phone if you're connected to Bluetooth. Go ahead and turn that on. That's it. Now your phone is connected to the vehicle. From here, you'll be able to go ahead and access your speed dials, as well as your call history, and also your phone book. This will download all of your contacts and be a lot easier to notice who's calling when somebody rings in. From here, you'll be able to also go ahead and access your Bluetooth via your Bluetooth options on the left-hand side of your steering wheel. But we'll get to that later. Next, I'm gonna show you how to use your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a very unique way to pair your phone to the vehicle. If you have an Android phone, please download the app Android Auto right in your app store for free. By plugging in your phone to the USB port, you're then going to notice that your screen is going to ask you if you'd like to enable once or always enable your Apple CarPlay. If it's your phone and you'll be plugging it in a lot, go ahead and select always enable. From here again, it's going to ask you if you'd like to turn on your Honda Link Assist. Go ahead and select yes. You'll then notice that your smartphone connection icon on the main screen turns into an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto icon. From here, this is going to go ahead and allow you to view the background and some of the apps right onto the screen. You're gonna have awesome music apps like your podcast, your Apple Music or Android Music, as well as some of your apps like Pandora and Spotify. You're also going to access iHeartRadio and Mixcloud. Then you're not only going to have your audio, but you're also going to have your Google Maps or your Waze. From here, you can go ahead and actually display the GPS from your phone right onto the screen. You're also going to be able to access your settings as well as your calendar, 
and also your phone and messages. On the left hand side, you're going to notice three icons. Those are your most used and favorite icons. You can actually go ahead and set up in the settings of which icons you want to display on the left hand side of the screen for easier access. You're also going to notice in the lower left hand corner a little icon with little boxes. Go ahead and select that. That'll bring up directions exactly as to where you are for your GPS as well as a voice and a go option for your GPS and your music that's currently playing. You're also going to have the option to go ahead and scroll through and bring up your messages. This will go ahead and allow the car to read your messages out to you through voice command. You also from here can voice command and talk back and send a text. Next, we're gonna move on down and I'll show you how to go ahead and customize your climate settings. Head back to the home screen of your vehicle. By selecting your settings icon, you're now going to be able to personalize more than just a few settings. From here, you'll be able to go ahead and select your clock information from 12 hour status to 24 hour format, as well as manual time zone, clock and wallpaper type, also daylight savings time. From here, you'll also be able to go ahead by selecting the back button and head to your camera options. Your camera is going to go ahead and allow you to customize your rear view camera, backup camera, and cross traffic monitor system. From here, you'll be able to also go ahead and select your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi options. This is where you can go ahead and delete connected phones that are no longer in use to the vehicle, as well as pairing codes and priority device settings. By heading back, you'll then be able to go ahead and customize also your smartphone settings, including your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You'll also be able to go ahead and customize your audio settings. This will go ahead and display what you'd like to view on the screen, including cover artist and audio source pop-ups. You'll also be able to head to system. This system is where you'll be able to customize the full home screen order, from home screen edit order to tachometer settings, as well as display settings, which allows you to go ahead and change the brightness and contrast of the background to even your background color, which allows you to choose from a various set of colors so that you can customize it whatever way you'd like. Also, you can go ahead and change the text message volume as well as voice recognition volume and guidance volume and touch panel sensitivity. By heading back, you'll then be able to go ahead and select the vehicle settings. This will be able to go ahead and customize most of your driving settings to the way that you'd like them, including driver assist system setup, which allows you to scroll through your Honda safety sensing features, including lane keeping assist and road departure mitigation, to driver position setup, keyless access setup, which allows you to go ahead and control your remote start as well as your door unlock settings, and your lighting setup. By scrolling down, you'll still be able to go ahead and customize your power tailgate setup and your door and window setup. By heading back, you'll be able to choose the phone icon. From here, this will go ahead and allow you to change between your Honda Link Assist by turning it on and off or your ringtone, as well as editing your Bluetooth device list. Now let's head back to the home screen and I'm gonna show you a few ways that we can customize our climate settings. Right underneath your main screen is going to be your climate settings. From here, you have dual climate control, and you'll be able to go ahead and access driver and passenger climate temperatures. By selecting the climate button in the center of the screen, you're then going to be able to have the option to turn your air conditioning on or off and the mode that you'd like it to come out of, as well as your fan speed. But you also have up and down arrows for your fan speed as well next to your climate button. You're also going to be able to have easy access to turn your climate on and off, as well as circulate through the vehicle, and also your front and rear defrosters. By selecting on the right hand side and pushing the sync button, this will then go ahead and connect the passenger's climate directly to the driver's climate and what it's set at. By selecting the push sync button and having the green light turn off, you're then going to be able to have the passenger access and control their own climate. Underneath both knobs, you're going to notice little seat settings. This is going to allow you to choose your heated seats from high, medium, and low. By selecting all the way through, you're going to see the red little lights pop up for high, medium, and low. Next, we're gonna head down to our shifter and go over a few additional buttons that Honda gives you. On the left-hand side of your shifter, you're going to notice a little P button. 
This is going to be your electronic parking brake. By pulling up on your electronic parking brake, you're then going to go ahead and engage the parking brake. You'll also notice on your main screen, the word brake with red lettering, go ahead and pop up. To turn this off, you'll go ahead and press all the way down on the brake and push down on the parking brake button. The button underneath is your Honda brake hold. Your Honda brake hold is a very, very convenient way when you're stuck in heavy traffic, at ATMs, or at long train stops. By having your seatbelt on and being in gear drive, you'll then go ahead and come to a complete stop. By putting on your Honda brake hold, it's going to hold the brakes for you so you can release your foot off the brakes. As soon as the cars in front of you start to move, you can simply press right back on the gas, and the next time you come to a complete stop while it's still on, you're going to go ahead and be able to have it hold the brakes again for you. In order to turn this off, simply go all the way down on the brake and select the brake hold button again. You'll also notice on the screen while your brake hold is on, a little box that says brake and one under it that says hold. This is how you'll know it's working. On the right hand side of your shifter, you're going to have a off button with a little A with a circle around it. This is your automatic idle engine stop. When you come to a complete stop for more than two to three seconds, your vehicle is going to shut the engine down. As soon as you release off of the brake, the car will go ahead and start back up. This is to save and preserve your best gas fuel efficiency. The option underneath it is gonna be your econ button. This is Honda's gas fuel efficiency saving button. When turned on at any time while driving or stopped, it's going to take a little bit of the performance away from the engine of the vehicle and give you the best gas fuel efficiency. Heading over to your steering wheel, let's check out some of the options on the right hand side. These are where your cruise control settings are gonna be, including your set and reset and cancel option for cruise control and your main button. Now you may be asking, what's the main button? The main button is going to go ahead and allow access to your adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. By selecting the little icon that looks like two lanes and a steering wheel, you're going to be able to turn on your lane keeping assist, or LKAS. Dotted lines are going to appear on the screen. When those lines become solid, the vehicle is going to beep at you, and it's detected the highway and throughway road that you're on. From here, the car is going to help guide you through the lanes on the highway and throughway. By selecting the little icon that looks like three lines in a little car, you're going to be able to turn on your Adaptive Cruise Control, or ACC. From here, it's going to allow you to choose from one to four distances in time from the vehicle in front of you and allow you to connect to that vehicle. When that vehicle slows down, your car will automatically keep itself at that safe distance away from the other vehicle and also speed you back up when that vehicle has become too far away or has gone out of the view. To turn this off, you can simply just press cancel to go ahead and cancel your cruise control or press the main button to go ahead and cancel and turn all of it off. Next, let's head to the left-hand side of your steering wheel controls. The left-hand side of your steering wheel is going to access your Bluetooth controls and audio controls, including picking up a phone call, dismissing or hanging up a phone call, and also voice recognition and talking to the vehicle to ask it to call somebody. You're also going to have a plus and minus sign, which is going to change the volume guidance of exactly what you're listening to, as well as up and down arrows for your station list, AM, FM, and XM, or left and right arrows to change from your presets or to change to the next station. Next, we're gonna go ahead and talk about your information icon button. By selecting your information button and being able to scroll over, you're going to be able to access your gas and fuel to your driver attention level, to your all-wheel drive torque, as well as your maintenance level, showing you your oil life, your audio settings, Bluetooth, or a blank screen. This also allows you to change from miles per hour to kilometers as well, to your information button, which will let you know if any of the doors are open or nobody has their seatbelt on. Underneath your steering wheel on the left-hand side of your dash, you're going to notice a few additional options, including traction control, which can be easily turned off by holding down the icon for more than four seconds, as well as your power tailgate option, as well as an icon that has the word off and looks like two cars crashing into each other. This is your collision mitigation braking. It's a pre-warning brake system which has three separate steps in order to keep you safe, including flashing an audio sign right on the main screen, which is going to let you know to hit the brakes, to pulsating of the brakes, to bringing you to a complete stop. This will always be on unless you hold the button down for four seconds to turn it off. When this is off, you'll notice a little icon right on the main dash. The option above that is going to be your road departure mitigation. When this is on, you'll notice a little green light pop up right next to the icon. 
This is going to be anywhere from 45 to 90 miles an hour when you cross a solid line on city driving. The vehicle is going to go ahead and alert you visually on the screen as well as vibrate the steering wheel. These can be customized as well back in your settings. Last but not least, let's set up your memory seating. When you've found the desired position of the seat that you'd like, go ahead and select the set button next to your door handle on the left hand side and choose through option number one or two. This will go ahead and also pair up with your key fob one or two when you get into the vehicle. Once you've set that setting, you then at any point during the ride can select option number two or one again and it'll go ahead and rearrange the seat back to what you've desired. Now that we've personalized the vehicle, if you have any additional questions, feel free to give us a call here at Mohawk Honda or visit our website. And from everybody with the Mohawk Honda family, congratulations and enjoy your new ride.